Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Are you counting what really counts? Metrics matter, especially since we're in such a metric driven era. But do you ever wonder if it's actually beneficial for us to know these numbers? Well, here's the thing. We constantly attempt to understand and measure outcomes of our health. And I mean, people count everything from calories burned to steps walked on a daily basis. Does this prove that we're so curious in nature that we're shifting from a feel good society? In this video, I'm gonna share with you how I'm using F45 and some cool new toys and gadgets to purposefully measure my health and fitness to get back into the best shape of my life as a 30 year old with a full time job. What's going on self made athletes, I'm Mason C and on this channel, it's all about helping you take your health and fitness to the next level. Today, I'm going to reveal how much body fat I've lost since the start of this F45 challenge and what you really need to look out for if you want to see results. Now, since we're on this journey together, hit me up in the comment section below with how you're getting on and what's been the most impactful factor for you so far. Is it the follow along workouts? Um, is it knowing that you're not alone? Or maybe you're doing this challenge to help you start to eat healthier. Let me know. I'm excited to hear from you guys. If there's one metric, one measurement that gets counted, analyzed and criticized the most when it comes to our health, it's the figure that you see on the scale, our weight. The question that I have is when you see that weight on that scale, if it increases or decreases, does that naturally affect or reflect how you perceive yourself in the mirror? Does that number reflect how you feel about your body? And some of my clients ask me, you know, hey Mace, I work out two, three, four times a week, but my weight stays the same or my weight is increasing. You know, what's the deal? Look, your weight is a number on the scale that is only a relative measurement. There are so many factors that can cause your weight to fluctuate. If we're strictly talking about the fitness side of things, working out two to five times a week is great. You should expect your weight to decrease a bit, but you can also expect it to stay the same given that your diet doesn't change much, okay? You're converting muscle into fat and muscle weighs more than fat. So for you to maintain weight or increase weight, that totally makes sense. Now, let's say your goal is to lose weight and gain lean muscle. And so you decide to change up your diet for a healthy one. Okay, that's great. But all the items which you think are healthier, are they actually helping you reach your daily calorie goals? Let's say you're hitting your caloric intake and expenditure for the day. My next question is, or the next thing that I'll dig into is what is the macronutrient breakdown of your intake. Meaning, are you meeting your daily protein needs while not overeating on carbs and fats, no matter how healthy they might be? Do you know if your body is burning carbs or fat as your source of energy? Yeah, I know. There's just so much for us to look at. And if you go past the surface level, health has so many layers to it. I mean, these are pretty interesting questions that I like to pick up on and you know what, they're all trackable answers. And if you're interested in learning about these, these are all metrics that can be measured to help you gain insights into what works for you and your body. See, the thing is, it's not enough for you to feel like you've pushed your hardest during the last workout, right? You want to know uh, how many calories, both active and total, you've burned in that last session. You want to challenge and compete against your friends on how many steps you did over the last week or how long of a run is around the block, right? Because by the end of the day, how many calories you burn will help you determine how much of a caloric deficit you'll be in to help you lose that weight that you so badly and desperately want to disappear. And it's not enough to be in bed for eight hours the night before only to still feel tired as hell the next day. Trust me, I know, I know that feeling. I'm not proud to announce this, but I sleep on average about five to six hours. And sometimes when I wake up or sometimes when I'm able to lie in and have like nine hours of sleep, I still feel more tired as if 
I didn't sleep at all or I slept less. Like, what the hell? What's the deal with that? Some people don't care, right? Oh, I feel tired today, whatever, I'll just take it easy, doesn't matter. Uh, others like myself, well, we want to know what happened in that restorative sleep period. Yes, I feel tired, but did I actually get enough sleep in stages like REM and SWS? Or a better question yet is how much sleep is actually enough and did I hit the necessary targets for optimum recovery. Finally, it's not enough for you to just blindly eat vegetables or rabbit food or things that you believe to be healthy, but not know how it can affect our bodies, right? I've got clients and I'm sure you, you hear people asking this, how come I'm on this or whatever diet and I'm eating this little calories, you're eating pizza, donuts, burgers, but you still look like that, like what the hell, right? The emphasis that gets placed on a person's weight makes people think that the only thing that matters when it comes to health is that number on this scale. And obviously there's some kind of disconnect here, right? To simply put it, um, sometimes what you do and the possible outcome is a little unknown until it happens. I'll be the first person to admit and tell you that I don't have all the answers to this. But what I do know is hopping on a scale and hoping that that number sways in your favor, it doesn't count for a lot of aspects in your daily life to help you measure your health. And I'm gonna use myself as a testament to this to prove that to you. This was my weigh-in uh, reveal after two and a half weeks of the F45 challenge with you guys. Uh, by the way, this was done early. Um, there was a reevaluation scan scheduled on the 21st of November, but just like you guys, I have until uh, early December to reach my fitness goals. And essentially all I did was I read between the lines. I dug a little deeper into the numbers that I was presented with. And I'm not just praying that the number on the scale will drop. Before we get into the next part of my sharing, I wanted to ask you guys, what are you using or doing to monitor your daily caloric intake or your expenditure? I'm interested in knowing if there are tools or apps uh, out there besides the ones that I'm currently using um, or don't know about or the ones that I'm about to introduce to you um, and I would really love to learn more about them. All right, so this is what I've been doing. For the first two weeks of this challenge, I consciously made an effort to have healthier choices during meal times, but I also snacked a lot. And no, I wasn't just like snacking on junk food. I picked high protein based snacks um, I had one or two cheat meals throughout the week. Now, if you've watched my first weigh-in video, you can see that it was okay effective, right? I dropped my weight, lost 1% body fat, and so for the last two and a half weeks, what I've done was I got my Fitness Pal app and I set the daily caloric target, uh, which was recommended by SciQ, and I tracked everything that I ate. Full disclaimer, I tracked everything that I ate, but I wasn't mindful of um, what my macronutrients were. So I just looked at, okay, this is my daily calorie intake. Let me just fill up the stat sheet. Um, doesn't matter if I hit proteins. It doesn't matter if I overate in carbs. It doesn't matter if I was completely over in fats. It didn't matter as long as the total calories was a number of calories met. And obviously these numbers on the app, it's, it's generic, right? Overall, it's a great way for me to track the intake uh, of the necessary calories and macros to fulfill my daily needs, depending on how active I was that day. What I want you to take away from this is, these are the metrics that you want to track. And I'm sure that you've heard it before or seen it on Instagram or heard it from another coach, but let me be the one to reinstate the fact. You need to be in a caloric deficit to lose weight. On the flip side to calorie intake, Obviously, there's calorie expenditure. And so we've been doing these team challenges within the F45 challenge at F45 Studio. And let me tell you, my competitiveness has gone through the roof. Like, more importantly, I'm more motivated to burn more calories on a daily basis. So whether it's training hard, training more often, I push myself 120% each session. And I'd say that I'm pretty blessed with having a high metabolic rate. What's more intriguing or what I find intriguing is 
after I see my caloric burn for each workout, I want to know what exactly is it that I'm burning? I'm curious to know what my energy source is, right? What am I using? Is it carbs or fat? And so for the remainder of this challenge, I'm using this little device called the Lumen to help me give full insights to hack my metabolism. So what is metabolism exactly? Well, it's the process that your body takes to convert food that you've eaten and drank and transfers it into energy that your body can use immediately or it can be stored later. And your body will switch back and forth between using fat and carbs as energy sources based on its availability. This is called metabolic flexibility. Lumen positions and markets itself as the first handheld device to measure your metabolism. Yeah, it looks like a vape, it's a nifty inhaler, but it actually uses CO2 sensors from your exhale of the breath to indicate the energy source that your body is using to function. And so my understanding is that there's a physiology range um, that measures a metabolic fuel in using fats or carbs and the ratio between them, and this is known as the respiratory exchange ratio. And I won't bore you with all the science and terms and things like that, but this little device has been great, okay? It, it's great to know what my energy source is. And um, on that note, you know, I wanted to point out that many of my clients have previously asked me whether they should eat before workout. Generally, I would say yes, eat a little bit, get some energy, and this is for general usual case. And most people, including myself, will take that energy uh, or whatever we've eaten 30 to 60 minutes prior to a workout and convert that into energy so that we can lift heavier or last longer in our workout sessions. Interesting because with Lumen, you just breathe into it and you can see if you have enough energy from the carbs from your previous meal. And that way, you're not over fueling, right? It's pretty interesting. There's no more guesswork. You just take it completely out of the equation. You don't have to think, oh, do I have enough energy to go through this workout? And I'm pretty confident in using the Lumen to gather these kind of insights because there's a list of trusted doctors, athletes, fitness professionals that back up this product. But there's one gentleman that I really look up to when it comes to biohacking and learning how to optimize your body. And I've mentioned him before. And if you want to check out his lab, how he helps enhance himself and his clients and people just like me and you, check out my video right over here. Um, but anyways, his name is Dave Asprey. He's the founder of a Bulletproof Nutrition. If you don't know who he is, stop living under a rock and check out his content. It's a real eye-opener. This is another reason why I'm so excited to give the Lumen a try and really track my metabolic rate throughout this process. Now, besides diet and nutrition, there are multiple factors that will affect our journey to being healthier and reaching our fitness goals. Sleep and physical activity also play a huge role. Physical activity I don't need to m mention much more about that because we're already going through the 45 day fitness challenge. But what I have mentioned a few times during our workouts is that I've been using this Whoop fitness tracker. It's one of the most in-depth fitness and health wearables that I've ever tried. I've previously had the Fitbit, I've had the Apple Watch, but Whoop takes everything to a whole new level. I'm able to monitor my sleep, my recovery, my training, overall health, and all these insights help me analyze how I can optimize my performance for that day. It's insane how much data this little strap can collect. And to make things more relatable, more comparative, I'm actually gonna wear three fitness trackers during a few of the workouts during the series to compare and contrast the readings that they give. And if you're interested in seeing that, you can check it out right over here. Now, find out which fitness wearable you like the most. I'll talk briefly about what metrics each tracks and things that I like, things that I don't like on each of them. Cool? Like I said at the beginning of this video, it's nice when you can monitor key metrics of your health. And for me, it's comforting to know that whatever I'm doing in the gym, the way that I eat, all of this good stuff is successfully helping me and my body's overall health. 
but on a daily basis, if I'm just going to the gym and then going to work, uh, maybe do a little bit of coaching, I'm not too metric focused. I, I just choose to drink more water throughout the day, make slightly healthier food choices when I'm ordering food at a restaurant, whatever restaurant that might be, and then I get my workout in and I call it a day. It's nice, however, that throughout the year that I do these kind of challenges to kick things up a notch and really put my body to the test, you know? Like, I know that I'm not sleeping enough, but I didn't know that even with less sleep, the quality of my rest wasn't too bad, or vice versa. Whoop might be telling me, hey, you slept for nine to 10 hours, but the quality of your sleep was absolutely shit. And when I see these kinds of results, I'm like, all right, damn, what the hell happened? Did I miss some kind of micronutrients? What did I eat throughout the day that might have made me feel this way or that might have caused this? And maybe I worked out too late. Is that why I was restless throughout my night while I was trying to sleep? Because all of these metrics, right, they help me think deeper, like on a deeper level altogether. And that is how it helps me progress in my health. And I've learned and I'm still learning more about myself and tricks to get the best out of my body, right? What I did five years ago, maybe even last year, that might not work for me now. Look, the truth is I turned 30 this year and my whole mentality has shifted for some kind of reason. Like I had friends who were like, oh, when you hit 30, all these things are gonna screw with you. And maybe that got into my head, but the reality is I'm in fitness for the long game. We're not doing this fitness series for the 45 days as a one and done, right? No, I want for myself at least, and for those of you who are genuinely looking to level up your fitness and health to stay healthy as long as we get older. I don't want that like age to be the one factor as to why I can't exercise. That's crazy, right? I definitely do think that mental health does play a huge role in this because when I hit the gym and I come back and I don't see immediate results, I don't give up, I stick with it. Some people will go to the gym for 30 days or three months or whatever, however long they think is enough. When they come back and they don't see results, they'll give up. They'll check out the mirror and say, all right, you know what, I spent all this time this is not worth it, you know, I, I'm not getting the bot that I want, they'll give up. I would say, think of it more of as an act of service for yourself. You know, come back from the gym, you don't see results yet, okay, well, why is that? Dig deeper, real deep, look at the metrics and the numbers, it's all part of the journey, and it's from here where we can start to build consistency and resiliency for ourselves and say, okay, well maybe if I do this, it'll help. And if it does, fantastic, you, you found a way to improve. If it doesn't, go back to the drawing board because I guarantee you that your consistency will outlive your intensity. And with that guys, we've still got a little bit of time left on this fitness journey together. Let me know how you are liking the workout so far. Help your boy out if you've gained some insights, if you've liked the workouts, hit that like button. Let's continue to smash our fitness goals and become stronger versions of ourselves. Before the end of the year, we've got some awesome workouts, events, weigh-ins that are coming out. So don't forget to subscribe, turn on your notifications so you know when the next uh, video is coming out. But until then, this is your boy Mace, peace.